So welcome to the Zender episode, where we tell you all of the best reasons and benefits for having a dinghy or kayak. We put together a list. So the first section we're going to talk about is the fun reason. We're just going to go straight to it. The first one, which is why we're out here now, is the great ability to explore your surroundings really immersed in nature as we come up to Coote's Cove. It's, uh, it's really special. It's Coote Cove. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention guys, the girls out there, great thing to do on the dinghy is litter pick. So we always keep a pair of litter pickers on board and an old carrier bag that we go around so if we do see any we'll uh, go pick it up. Got some litter here actually. One of the reasons we love our dinghy is to entertain. On nice summer days we have friends over and we can take them out in a dinghy as well. Go for a little row, show surroundings. Also, when it's really hot, it's a lot cooler, closer to the canal. So we sometimes go and either row to the shady spot or just sit and enjoy a bit of a breeze in the middle of the canal. The next reason why we love having a dinghy is because we can go out on it late in the evening. Late is different from month by month. In March, it could be 7 o'clock at night. Anyway, the whole point is going out when the sun is setting or when it's already dark. It does get really quiet and peaceful in the middle of the canal. Usually this happens after we finish work, so it's the time for us to connect, have a chat and discuss what happened during the day. Once we had a slightly embarrassing moment of rowing at night, we ended up um, rowing in the path of the canal that was private but we didn't see the sign so we got shouted at um, from, some, from someone on the boat. Also when we were rowing late at night sometimes boaters come out and they want to check out what is going on, why is someone making noise outside um, being vigilant and it's just us with a lantern. <laughs> Another reason to have a dinghy is for exercise. Obviously you can row as fast as you want, but also we found a new way of using it, which is an attempt of fake stand-up paddle boarding. You stand in a dinghy with an oar and pretend that you're on a paddle board. I guess you can use that as an exercise. I think you're going to have to show us. Oh, uh... I'll press a bit. Can you see the Berg Highway? It's over here. The next things that we're going to talk about are the usefulness of actually having a dinghy. So it's all well and good having fun on it, but actually, can it be used for anything? So the first thing we use the dinghy for is when you're moored up and your bins get full. Um, in recycling and general waste. You can pile the dinghy up, row all the way there, empty all your rubbish um, in one go. You don't have to do multiple trips and walks and trying to juggle it on a bike. You see the video of Marina trying to get her recycling into her bag. But also water, we used to have big bottles of water. Some boaters have like emergency water. Uh, we've got a water filter on our boat now so we don't need it for drinking but we do um, have them topped up it's useful to have a dinghy to be able to carry all that weight we've used it to go to the shops so number two for utility is um, being able to do maintenance on the boat so getting up close to the side of the boat um, and painting touching up is really good um, and cleaning it as well uh, it's just really handy to have that you can also see your hull if you're in like clean clear water um, good for that. And then finally, which again we've only done 
once was uh, Marina got back from a holiday and we were really far away from the bridge to where she got dropped off. So I was able just to row down to the canal and pick her up with her suitcases, juggling all of that on here. You've not done that for me, have you, yet? Just go away and it then come back. <laughs> Baby, I'll <get> it. <laughs> When we were getting the dinghy, uh, one of the things uh, that we were also considering was getting a kayak. In fact, it started with the idea of getting a kayak. And we were thinking, can you get two people on it? Could you get the shopping on it? At the time, we needed to pick up water, and you know, how useful is it? Would we get bored? Um, and that led us to thinking about getting a little rowing boat. A little bit more useful. If we ever wanted to, we could put an outboard on here. I would love one, but Maria says no. We'll destroy the serenity. Beep. No, it won't. Okay, you get to it quicker. Get to where quicker. Serenity. I think the key reason for not getting a kayak was would we get bored? Um, can you get two people on it? And is it useful as a tool as well? Um, and that's a little bit where the rowing boat sort of played out. But little boats are obviously a lot, lot more expensive. Um, but we found this beauty on uh, eBay. It was it about 140 quid? And he drove it to us on the roof of his van. Another benefit of having a rowing boat versus a kayak is that you can fit three people on, on here. It's obviously not that comfortable, but if you have friends over and you want to take them for a row, you can do that. We've tried it and it works. It's really fun. So this last section is cons of having a little rowing boat. So the first one is winter flooding. Um, so when it rains, all of this bottom bit will fill up with water. So in the depths of winter, I have to climb onto the dinghy with the hand pump and uh, pump it all out. But that's really annoying because it's all work and no play in winter. Um, well, it feels like that anyway. Number two. Everyone keeps asking us, how is it to go for a lock? So when we bought the dinghy, we thought that um, we would lift it out of the water, put it on the roof while we go into locks, because it's only really small, um, it'll be really light. Yeah, we'll just do that, it'll be fine. Um, yeah, we can't lift it out of the water. Uh, well, we could technically, but to do a lock, um, it's definitely not worth it. So we either tie it alongside us um, or have it on the back of the boat and it's been fine it's been fine um we've been in a lot with a 72 foot narrow boat and the dinghy's been behind us um, and we all fit in fine so uh, no worries about size it is just another thing to keep an eye out for when you're in a lock number three is having it tied up alongside the boat all the time um it used to have some rubber on the edge but that fell off because uh, when it was next to our exhaust it got quite hot as you can imagine that's what an exhaust is for we uh, melted the rubber off the side of the boat. So it does now rub on the side of our boat. It's not that aggressive. Um, it only takes like the top layer of paint. You can see the undercoat. So it's not going down to the metal, but it is annoying, uh, to say the least. Nothing you can't touch up from sat within the dinghy though. Very easy. The last, the final trouble with the the dinghy is when we have it in London which is quite a busy area often in London we double more or people double more next to us so when we have a dinghy it can be in the way or it can be a problem if you are in a tight mooring spot for others to come by to be honest it hasn't been a massive issue we only had a problem maybe twice but it's another thing to watch out for let's continue our dinghy tour we're now arriving at Dog Bay. This is where all of the dogs come to play. They jump in before their owner can actually catch them. We've seen so many disappointed owners next to the Dog Bay and tons of wet dogs. It's really funny. We are approaching a lily pad lagoon. As we make our way over to Duck Key, over here, where all the ducks climb out. They built the quay themselves and they come and stand on the top of the dock. 
we sometimes put some more up here when we're trying to run through sprinklers. Yeah. Welcome to Duck Key. I'll just more as alongside. It's quite a posh place this is. Infrastructure. So my duck friends like to climb out here and then come and sit on top of here, do a bit of sun baking, sleeping. Being very careful of Lily Pad again. Cup of tea. Thank you for coming on the dinghy tour with us. I hope you enjoyed it. Do you have any more dinghy questions? Leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It's dinner time and we haven't made anything yet. I'm so hungry, I'm eating my beard. This is not how you do it. Oh, is this your bag? Extra special thanks to our amazing Patreons. If you want to support our videos, join our Patreon crew for a chance to be invited on board and many other perks. Thanks again guys.